Iron Fist Publishing and the Plastic Soldier Company were nice enough to send me a copy of their Battle Group World War II tabletop rules to have a look at and review. I've seen a lot of posts on Facebook asking about Battle Group, so rather than a standard review I thought I'd do a quick Switcher's Guide to get people up to speed with what to expect from the game. I'll be trying my best to answer some common questions players from other games ask about Battle Group. If you want more detail about the rules and how the game plays than this short guide, Joe from The Acceptable Casualties has some great videos, including some very entertaining battle reports showing the game in action. I would highly recommend having a look. I know I enjoyed them. The URL to his channel is in the description. Beasts of War also have some good online articles about Battle Group. Part 1 is an overview and is here if you want to check it out. Again, I'll put the URLs in the description. First up, what is Battle Group? Since this is a Switcher's Guide, I'm assuming you've already played a similar tabletop wargame before. But in case you're a newcomer, Battle Group is a tabletop miniatures wargame. This means the game is meant to be played between two players on a table, with miniature terrain, vehicles and soldiers representing opposing military units. The two players use the rules in the book to determine how their units can move, and governs combat and the outcomes. Rolls of the dice insert an element of random chance in many of these interactions. The rules manage the play through alternating turns until one side wins. Battle Group is a historical wargame set in World War II. The armies and units generally reflect this period. Battles are usually randomly generated scenarios, but may be set in a particular theatre or time period of the war. Another common question is, what do I need to start playing Battle Group? I'll leave aside issues of terrain and miniatures and so on, I'll cover those in a bit more detail later. This is looking at what rulebooks and other resources you need to get a game going. You can get started with just the Battle Group rulebook. It has all the rules you need, plus tokens, counters and unit cards needed to play. Currently the rulebook is available as a hardcover 170 page full colour book. The rules have also been published previously as a hardcover and softcover book, and even in a mini rulebook format. So the rulebook has all the rules you need to be able to play a game of Battle Group, but you also need some forces to play with. The current hardcover rulebook has this covered as well. It includes unit lists for some Canadian and German late war forces in Normandy as well as some scenarios for you to play them in. These forces lists and scenarios would be okay to get you started, but there are a range of additional supplement books for other nations and other periods and specific theatres of the war. These can be purchased separately either from your local game store or online from the Plastic Soldier Company and other retailers. For example, the recently released Battle Group Market Garden book covers the forces for the Market Garden campaign in Northwest Europe in September 1944. Similarly, the Battle Group Tobruk book covers the fighting in the North African desert campaigns. New campaign and army list books are published regularly. There are often bundle deals where you can buy the rule book and a theatre book together. These are usually great value. Additionally, there are also packs of data cards for different nationalities' equipment and vehicles that you can buy. These are similar to the data cards in the rulebook and theatre supplements, but supplied cut into useful tabletop playing aids. You don't have to buy these, the information comes with the supplement books, but they are a useful addition. So just a quick recap. You can get started playing with just the Battle Group hardcover rulebook. This has all the rules you need, plus some army lists and scenarios to get you started, along with counters and vehicle and equipment data sheets. To add more forces, settings, scenarios and campaigns to your game, you can buy additional supplement books. These don't include the rules of play, but cover the forces, settings, scenarios and any special rules for the period they cover. You'll still need the main rulebook to be able to use these supplements. You can also buy card packs for vehicles, equipment and weapons. These replicate the information available in the supplement books, but are in a convenient, pre-cut printed form. So these aren't required. This information is already in the rules or theatre book you're using, but they are a cheap and convenient gaming aid for Battle Group. These are the Battle Group products you need to play. Other general resources would be appropriate terrain, vehicles, soldiers and other playing pieces, as well as a ruler or tape measure and some six-sided dice. These are common to most tabletop historical wargames. This brings me to the next common question. What scale is Battle Group played in? 
Tabletop wargames are usually designed for a specific scale of miniatures. Battle Group is designed to support both 20mm and 15mm scale. These correspond to 172nd scale and 1/100th scale in model terms. Generally, these wargame scales represent the height of a human figure, so a soldier in 20mm scale would be roughly 20mm tall, while a 15mm soldier would be a bit smaller. There's a lot of variation between manufacturers, but this would give you a rough idea of the size. Accommodating the two scales within the rules makes the battle group system flexible. Tabletop wargames are also usually played on a 6 foot by 4 foot tabletop, and this suits miniatures of these scales. There are plenty of readily available models in 172nd and 176th scale. This is a common scale for plastic scale model kits. 1/100th scale is a common wargaming scale with manufacturers like Battlefront, the Plastic Soldier Companies, Vesda and others offering vehicles in that scale. These can be plastic, but resin and metal kits are also available. There are also manufacturers offering terrain like buildings, trees and other pieces to create a battleground for your battle. OOHO Railway Miniatures and Terrain is 187th scale, sort of between the two. This means model railway materials are a plentiful and easily available source of terrain, buildings and other tabletop gaming accessories. If you're an existing player you're probably well aware of most of this, but this does lead us on to the question, can I use my existing miniatures and terrain in battle group? Generally the answer is yes. If you have 20mm or 15mm terrain, troops or vehicles, these will work fine for you in a game of battle group. Battle group is designed for individually based troops, whereas other systems like Flames of War mount several soldiers on a base as a unit or team. However, this isn't an issue. You can use your base troops in battle group as long as you use a counter or dice to represent how many soldiers are still alive on the base. As the unit takes casualties, change the dice or counter to show how many troops are left. Apart from this, terrain, vehicles and troops can be used easily between different game systems. This means it's easy to use your existing gaming resources to try out battle group just by grabbing the rulebook. Switchers also wonder what size battles are played in battle group. Again, the rules cover a range of options here. Battle group is very scalable and there are four game sizes listed in the rules. Squad level games at around 250 points involve a few squads of soldiers and maybe a vehicle or gun. These are quick to play and are a good starting point for new players. Platoon level games at around 500 points and the company level around 1000 points introduce more units, weapons and vehicles on each side. Battalion level games at 1500 points or more are larger affairs with lots of units and probably needing a bigger gaming table to play out effectively. But accommodating all these different levels of play means you can play battle group at the size that's comfortable for your personal playstyle, whether that's small, quick, low-level skirmishes with a friend over possession of a hill or farmhouse, up to grand battles over a huge table involving many units and support elements, deciding the fate of whole towns. Let's look at what's different about the battle group rules. As I said, this is a switcher's guide rather than an in-depth look at the battle group rules. However, I will point out that turns work a little differently. If you're a Flames of War player, you're used to an I go, you go turn structure where one player moves all of his units, shoots, and resolves combat and assaults, then the other player does the same. Once this is resolved, that's the end of the turn and you start again. Battle Group has a similar structure, however, one of the distinctive features of the game is the orders mechanic. Rather than being able to move and shoot with all their units in their turn, a player rolls an orders dice each turn to generate a number of orders available. These are rolled on a number of dice depending on the size of the force, and adding things like officers can add to your orders total as well. Orders are used to activate units to move, move and shoot, and so on. There are about 15 different order types including combat, resupply, repair, rally, calling artillery, engineering tasks and even reaction orders which place units in ambush ready to fire during the opponent's turn. Once a player runs out of orders they can't activate any more units that turn. Another interesting mechanic in the game is battle rating. This is a force morale mechanic. Basically, your forces get a battle rating which reflects the training and quality of your troops and the strength of your force. Battle rating counters are drawn when you take combat casualties, but it's also a resource that you can use to rally pinned units. 
Once a unit is pinned, it stays that way until you unpin it. To unpin units, you take a counter that indicates how much the battle rating cost was to do this. This makes an interesting dilemma for players because the cost is random. Pinned units are less effective, but rallying units might turn up a big counter, and rallying your units every time they're pinned can chip away at your battle rating and cost you the game. But if you leave them pinned, they are less effective. It adds a nice bit of tactical complexity to the game. This random cost mechanic also applies to casualties and losses, with players drawing a battle rating counter when a unit is destroyed. Other game factors can also force you to take a counter. The random nature of the battle rating counter system means the loss of a unit might be inconsequential or devastating, and the effect of losses is cumulative, grinding down the effectiveness of your force. There are more 2, 3 and 4 counters than 1s and 5s, but an unlucky draw can really hurt. As a nice wrinkle, there are also random effects chits as well. Some negative, but some positive, so a lucky draw here might give you a bonus rather than deal you damage. You keep the counters you draw secret from your opponent, so they know how many counters you've had to take, but not the value of them. They never really know how close your force is to collapse. Once the value of the battle rating counters you're forced to draw reaches your force's battle rating, it breaks and you lose the game. Another standout rule for me is that tanks and guns track ammunition. In other games, players can fire away with no regard for ammunition levels or fear of running their expensive monster tank out of ammunition. Tracking ammunition usage adds a bit of bookkeeping to the game, but also aids realism here. Players are less likely to risk a marginal shot at long range for fear of running out of ammunition later. Better to wait for a clearer shot. And talking about shooting, the combat mechanic splits fire into area fire where you try to suppress and pin an opponent, and aimed fire where you try and cause casualties. Targeted units get a cover bonus if they've taken cover or dug in. Indirect fire includes a communication mechanic that also adds the vagaries of unreliable communications into the mix. There are also all the usual inclusions like air power, engineering, minefields and so on you would expect to see in a World War II historical wargame. Again, I'm not going into detail here on any of these. I'm just trying to give you an indication of the flavour of the game. It's obviously trying to capture the historical flavour of ground combat in World War II and make a fun and playable game with interesting and realistic mechanics. Experienced players have said the game rewards using historically accurate tactics. The game mechanics also include some nice nuanced tactical gameplay like having to judge if you can afford to rally your pinned down units, or if the potential cost to your battle rating might not be worth the risk. So that's some of the interesting mechanics in Battle Group. Our last topic in this Switcher's Guide is about force building. This was the issue most responders were curious about when I posted asking for questions on Facebook. As I mentioned before, the force options in the hardcover rulebook are limited to the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division and the 12th SS Panzer Division. Additional forces are included in the separate campaign supplement books like Battle Group Market Garden. Choosing forces in Battle Group is much more pick and mix and seems a bit less restrictive and structured than Flames of War. Rather than force diagrams with compulsory choices, Battle Group have sets of units for the force you're playing and you choose from the available units to start your force. There are some restrictions, these are noted with each unit listing, and some units allow you to choose a certain number of support options. Let's look at an example with a Canadian Infantry Platoon at 94 points. The platoon comprises a platoon command section, three rifle sections, a light mortar team, and up to four support options. As you can see from the entry here, this platoon has a battle rating of 11, and the troops are regulars. The platoon command section is five men, and includes an officer and a mortar spotter. There is also an option to include a Piat anti-tank weapon for an additional five points. The three rifle sections each have ten men, including a Bren gun. The light mortar team is two men and has a two-inch mortar. These are all included in your 94 points, or 99 points if you added the Piat option to the command section. Fielding this infantry platoon also allows you up to four support units. These include a combat medic, heavy machine gun team, Piat team, medium mortar team, or an anti-tank gun. 
Each platoon support unit can only be taken once with that platoon. Additionally, taking an infantry unit allows one choice from the reconnaissance, engineers or specialist unit sections. I haven't built a force for battle group yet, but it looks a bit more freeform and varied than some other games. These would be good for playing with different forces and seeing how different units work together. Again, more experienced players have commented that the forces in battle group are better suited to varied, fun, casual play, rather than a more structured tournament style focus. Certainly the instructions for putting a force together seem simple enough to follow, so it shouldn't take too long to get started. So, that's my Switch's guide to battle group. Hopefully it's answered some of the common questions wargamers have about the system, and given you an idea of how it might play. If you already have models and terrain from another game system, it would be simple to give battle group a go. A copy of the lovely hardcover book would be enough to get you started. Then the campaign supplements can add additional forces if you like it and want to expand your options. If you want to see more details about the rules or watch some gameplay videos, I can recommend The Acceptable Casualties. A link to that channel is detailed below. You might also want to check out the Beasts of War articles. Thanks to the Plastic Soldier Company and Iron Fist Publishing for supplying the review copy of the rulebook. <laughs>